Hello again everyone, how are you all? Hope you're all well. Today we're going to be taking a very quick look at the Fairchild Channel F. Now this game's console came out one year before the Atari 2600. So yes, it's that old. It's 1976 this came out. Uh, and it's actually the first game's console to actually have uh, removable ROM cartridges. Even though everyone thinks the 2600 is the first one, this actually was. Uh, if you go back to the Odyssey 1 as well, that had cartridges, but they were more like jumper packs. They, there was no ROMs or anything inside the cartridges themselves. What we've got here is the Grandstand Edition 1, which is the one that was distributed in the UK. There is lots of different box variations as well. I used to have one which just had a big picture of the Fairchild Channel F on, big black box. Uh, and this is the revision 2 as well, you can tell by here, because the revision 1 used to have like a compartment at the top where the actual joysticks at the back used to live inside. So that is the only real difference in that. This didn't live for very long. Obviously, once the Atari 2600 came in, they dominated the market, and unfortunately, this took a back seat. Although there is still a good community for this, alive and kicking, still producing homebrews, cartridges and things to this day. So, yeah, we're going to open this up now and just have a quick look at the actual console itself, show off a couple of the game cartridges, but tune in for another day because we're going to go through every game cartridge I have because you need two-player for these, um, a lot of them as well. So we, this is just a look at the hardware today and then we'll have a look at the actual games cartridge, the, the games themselves. Um, yeah, I love the design on this, I really do. It's so, so 70s, isn't it? I mean, this, this ship here, really love it. So let's get into the actual box. If you can see actually on here, this is an example of some of the games. We are talking very, very early uh, 70s gaming. So if you're expecting the PlayStation 5 graphics, you ain't gonna get it here. This is proper old school. All right, now let's have a look at the console itself. Uh, the console itself comes, it's got its uh, power supply here as well. And it's got like this DIN, like, a plug that goes into it as well, so that's hardwired into the console, but the actual power brick itself. Um, I think this is wired like this because it may be obviously different voltages for different areas, so they can just switch them out that way. I could be wrong. I'm normally wrong about a lot of things. Um, this People always say that this tends to look like a bit of an 8-track player, and uh, when I show the cartridges, you can see why it, why it gets that uh, reputation. If you give the glare there. Uh, again, we're talking 70s, so we are wood grain era. Gotta love some fake wood grain on your games cartridge, uh, games cartridges, games consoles, cartridges on the brain. And you switch through the different games with the buttons here, and the cartridges go in this slot there. Uh, as I said, the original model used to have a a like a trap door thing up here. You lifted it up and you put these inside. But this later revision model, hang on, we've got this stuck around here. The joys of actually um, trying to do videos with like 70s and 80s consoles is everything's hardwired in. You've got so many cables coming off stuff. Uh, the joysticks sit nice and neat here and these cradles at the back. And we will have a look at the games, uh, the uh, joysticks in a minute. So as far as looks wise go, I really, really like my hand not being bitten off by this box. I really like the look of this. I really do. Uh, forgive the dust. It's like there's grooves in here. It's, it's so difficult to to get and clean up. Um, to be honest, I've only recently bought this and I haven't had a chance to give it a proper clean yet. I just want to show it off to you guys um, because it's a bit of history. This really is a bit of gaming history. You can continue with your wood grain around the sides. And, and what, what do you think of the styling of it? You know, what do you think? I, I think this looks amazing. I really do. Uh, right, if we've got joysticks as well, we've got to unwrap them from the back here. And see if we can get these off. It's nice and neat that they go on the side like that. It's a bit of a pain sometimes. Now, the joysticks. These tend to get a bit of a laugh. And they really shouldn't because um, they're very innovative. Innovative? That sounds about right. If it's wrong, correct me in the comments. Um... But these joysticks here, uh, even though they look really, really strange, and to be honest, I've posted these up on Twitter. Um, I think it was Neil, the Retro Man Cave, was doing a calendar for joysticks. And I said, well, you need to put the Fairchild channel, what effing? Um, and I sent him a picture, and Twitter actually 
covered it up and said may not be for um, children, <laughs> mature audiences only. So yeah, it's a little bit of a rude shape, but the joystick itself, you grip it there and then you've got this joystick at the top, which you can do your forward, your backwards, your left and your right. And then if you press down, it is a button. If you pull up, it is a button. And then you can also rotate axes as well. So this has got an awful lot going for it for a very simple joystick. And remember the type of games that we're going to be playing here. They're not that complex. Yet so much technology went into this. So much so that I think this was also adapted and used for the Atari later on. They put a button here or something like that. So you can press it whilst you're playing. Uh, there's... A good Pong game inbuilt in this, which takes advantage of the actual twisting mechanism, uh, where you can like change the angle that the paddle is and it shoots it off at different angles around the board. Really does make for a really good Pong game. Uh, and there's also a Formula One driving game where you've actually got to manually change the gears yeah, with the gear stick. So yeah, they were thinking outside the box. It is just a shame that... Can I say a shame? The Atari came to the market... And like this thing then was dead and buried. They were unfortunately not able to compete with, with the Atari. But then again, not a lot of people were back then, were they? So yes, they, they fit nice and neatly there at the back, just out the way. Now, the game's cartridges themselves, um, I think, are really, really nice. I mean, first of all, they came in such colourful boxes. And yeah, just just something nice about them. Every single one is numbered. Uh, and as I said, there's a, a quite a, a good homebrew scene for the Channel F still going to this day. So yeah, this is game 17 and this is Pinball. And what else did we get? We got um, Cartridge number three and this is Blackjack. I need to get some more of these actually. One number thirteen, and you used to get this quite a lot. We've got a couple of different games on this one here, and this has got Robot War and Torpedo Alley on this one. Put them there like that. See, it's so bright and colourful. Uh, this is game cartridge number ten as well, and this is like cat and mouse game. You know, took a couple of different games on that one, different variations of like the cat and mouse game. I've got a couple of loose cartridges here. Game cartridge number twelve, which is baseball. And I've got game cartridge number 16, which is dodgeball. Now, these cartridges are absolutely solid. They are built like bricks. Um, you, there's no way you're going to damage them, because just look at that. That is over-engineered. It really, really was. Um, but then again, this is where you get the idea of people thought, oh, they look like 8-tracks, because they actually do. And if you actually look at the... Uh, hang on, let's move these out of the way. If you actually look at how they load in as well, you can see why people thought they were like an 8-track. Because they slide in like that, and to eject, you've got a button here to pull them back out. I love them. I really do. These are something special. Um, I'm going to be getting a couple more game cartridges before I do a proper video, because I want to get game cartridge number one, which has got like some drawing programs on it as well. And some like some of the early games, you know, like the first cartridge that comes with things, which has normally got like a little compilation on. It does have a couple of Pong variations built in, and you got to think in the 70s, the Pong games were just they were everywhere. You know, what I mean, everyone played them, everyone loved them. Pong was just everywhere. So yeah, I am going to be doing another video on this. I hope this was just just a, just a quick look at the the Channel F. A um, little bit of a, a backstory with it. I'll go into more depth later on. I knew, I do know that I want to be doing a collaboration video on this with Nerdy Geezer because he's doing an awful lot of research on it, which will just be great. You know what I mean? I'd love to know the history of it. I mean, I know there's been documentaries about this because the guy that made this was completely forgotten about and he really shouldn't have been because the guy was an innovator, if you know what I mean. But the problem is it was going up against Atari. He wasn't going to win, was he, really? Um, yeah, it is a shame. But I'm very happy to have this in my collection. So, yeah, tune in. I will let you guys know. I'll put like a link in a short or something like that when there's going to be uh, a video of the gameplay of this. But for now, I just wanted to show off the amazing wood-grained... And it's eating my hand again. Hang on, let's do it this way. The amazing wood-grained Fairchild Channel F... Um, 
because, you know, nobody really talks about it. So let's talk about it. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you guys again next time. Bye.